Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to look at some of the creepiest things lurking in the Arctic, from Martian organisms living under the ice caps to a monster discovered in Canada. If you're ready, let's get started. Mars life suggests that hidden organisms found in the Arctic may be similar to life in space. Microbes discovered near the North Pole in Canada, buried as surface sediment near a place called Los Hammer Spring, could provide a blueprint for life forms that could exist on Mars. This is because the permafrost in Canada's high glacial regions is extremely cold and oxygen-free. In short, it shows that the environment that can be found on Mars is almost identical. The Merkel universe could never be foreseen microbes, seeing the latest and most interesting in an environment just like the one on Mars survive. These microbes are tiny, but they feed on simple inorganic compounds, the same inorganic compound found on Mars such as sulfur, sulfur even. The dick is showing that these sediment samples are being used by the European Space Agency for testing purpose in the next Mars mission to detectable life. Basically, evidence of alien has been found just below the North Pole, or at least the feasibility of thing. It has given scientists a lot of confidence there really are life forms in Marshall. Sponge gardens were rediscovered by scientists at a surprisingly vibrant ecosystem growing into ocean near the North Pole. Its rich and densely populated ecosystem consisted of huge gardens discovered near the summit of long extinct volcanoes. According to the researchers, the sponges found here are the features that can apparently be found all the way to the north. The researchers discovered these fascinating animals by lowering a camera under the ice and then taking photos of what was hiding at the bottom of the sea. The photos revealed sponge gardens and they even managed to collect some samples. What they found really shocking after analyzing the samples was that most of these living sponges were 300 years old or older. Scientists were surprised to find so much life because the environment didn't seem to be exactly suitable for producing such large life forms. Very little light now penetrates the surface of the ice, there is almost no food, and scientists couldn't even figure out what the sponges were eating. It wasn't until they analyzed the samples that they realized the sea sponges were behaving like microbial symbionts, meaning they were feeding on ancient organic matter. In simpler terms, these sponges are feeding on the remains of animals that died thousands of years ago. These things are similar to fossil eaters, which survive by eating the slow-moving remains of creatures that went extinct thousands of years ago. The record-breaking dive is worth noting that on August 3, 1958, a United States submarine became the first ship to reach the North Pole by traveling under the ice, which was also the first nuclear submarine ever built. The commander of the U.S. Byless, William Anderson, wrote in his logbook, Santa Claus, this personage boarded the ship at the North Pole. While this may seem strange, the commander was simply celebrating his success in a cryptic entry in his book because, believe it or not, the first sub-ice mission to the North Pole was top secret. Operation Codename Sunshine was a highly classified operation. Yes, it was a big deal for my world, but given the Cold War in the 1950s, it was a bigger deal for American pride. In another time period, even White Aiden called it a magnificent achievement and sent his congratulations to the team. Unfortunately, they did not find any monsters or strange life forms hiding in the Arctic. Instead, they proved the capabilities of the most nuclear missiles. Because, before the USB fill, the submarines had surface snorkels above the water to get air for their engines re recharge their batteries. However, what were they doing? By the time they reached the North Pole, they had already been underwater for three days. On August 7, they did not reappear until they reached Greenland. The land of the gods has long been believed in cultures around the world to be a great and magical place. Many cultures believe that their ancestors came from the Arctic and were forced to migrate south by a great ice flood 10,000 years ago. In 800 BC the first inhabitants of the Arctic supposedly traveled to Europe and Asia, established new settlements and became the people of the world. In fact, there are at least half a dozen mythologies around the world that place them in the Arctic. Take the Vikings, for example. According to Norse mythology, the land of immortality is at the North Pole. Celtic myths describe paradise as a place where the sun shines continuously for six months. That sounds a bit like the North Pole. The Greeks even called the North Pole Hyperbora, meaning above the north wind, and said it was a place where the sun shone 24 hours a day. The airship Italy was an airship of the Italian Air Force. Airships were extremely popular in the 1920s. Since crossing places like the North Pole by boat was a nightmare, scientists thought it would be easier to visit the North Pole in a giant balloon. This half-reined airship was designed and piloted by Italian engineer Umberto Novi. The North Pole expedition began on April 15, 1928. The airship left Milan with 20 people and 7,711 kilos of equipment. It took 30 hours to reach Germany and after a short rest they continued to Norway. When they reached the North Pole, they hit an ice sheet. One person was killed instantly on impact, another was killed by weather conditions while waiting to be rescued, 
and six crew members disappeared, never to be seen again, trapped in the canopy of the balloon as it flew away. In July of the same year, there was a rescue operation in which 17 people died, including members of the rescue team. Italy was a major disaster and the remains of the airship are still waiting to be found somewhere in the Arctic. Now, lightning storms in the Arctic are not exactly common. In fact, one of the last things scientists expect to see in the Arctic is a bolt of lightning from the sky. This is because lightning is a phenomenon that occurs during warm weather. In the middle of summer you can expect a big thunderstorm, but in the cold wastelands of the Arctic it doesn't happen. At least it has never happened before. For almost 20 years, every lightning strike that occurs has been monitored in real time by a private organization called the World. These scientists use a global sensor system to collect information about things like the frequency and distribution of lightning strikes. Data collected over the last 17 years shows a very impressive increase in lightning strikes around the Arctic. In fact, anywhere above 65 degrees in the Arctic region, there have been dramatic changes. Between Robert Hells, the chief executive of this organization, and 2022, lightning strikes on glaciers tripled. Lightning was actually detected very close to the North Pole in 2019. This was an incredibly rare event and we may see more as climates continue to change and glaciers continue to warm. Canadian Monster, a graduate student from the University of Manitoba has scientifically discovered a real monster under Canada's Arctic sea ice. Near the North Pole, a monster with eight hairy legs, a translucent body, eyes, two antennae and no mouth was found. It may sound scary, because this thing is scary. The only good news is that the monster is only two millimeters long. If you want to get a closer look at this thing, you will need a microscope. Orlik didn't go looking for this monster on purpose. He found it more by accident, while searching for biodiversity in the Arctic. In fact, this creature is a type of copepot, a simple organism from the Monstroloida family. There are more than 160 different species of copepods in the world's oceans, but this is the only one that lives in the Canadian Arctic. Lightning storms are not exactly common in the Arctic anymore. In fact, one of the last things scientists expect to see in the Arctic is lightning flashing from the sky. This is because lightning is a phenomenon that occurs during warm weather. You can expect a big lightning strike in the middle of summer, but it doesn't happen in the cold, barren lands of the Arctic. At least it has never happened before. For almost 20 years, every lightning strike has been monitored in real time by a private organization called the World. These scientists use a global system of sensors to collect information on things like the frequency and distribution of lightning strikes. Data collected over the last 17 years shows a very impressive increase in lightning around the Arctic. In fact, dramatic changes are observed everywhere above 65 degrees in the Arctic region. Lightning strikes on glaciers tripled between Robert Hells, the chief executive of this organization, and 2022. Lightning was actually detected very close to the North Pole in 2019. This was an incredibly rare event, and we may see more as climates continue to change and glaciers continue to warm. The Canadian monster, a graduate student from Manitoba University, discovered a scientifically real monster under Canada's Arctic sea ice. Near the North Pole, a monster with eight hairy legs, a translucent body, eyes, two antennae and no mouth was found. It may sound scary because this thing is scary. The only good news is that the monster is only two millimeters long. If you want to take a closer look at this thing, you will need a microscope. Orok didn't go looking for this monster on purpose. He found it more by accident while looking for biodiversity in the Arctic. In fact, this creature is a type of copepod, a simple organism from the Monstrolita family. More than 160 different species of copepods are found in the world's oceans, but this is the only one that lives in the Canadian Arctic. Telephone was studying the classification of small ocean animals for his master's degree and was therefore already familiar with small sea creatures. Living in an ice camp not far from the North Pole, he was studying the ocean as part of his thesis on plankton blooms under the ice, and that's when he made his discovery. The phone was very lucky, and with this discovery he showed us that life exists almost everywhere on the planet. Strange blue lights were seen extremely strangely over the polar circle not far from the North Pole in 2019. According to NASA, the mysterious blue lights had nothing to do with aliens, though the lights certainly look like some kind of strange alien phenomenon. The people who took the photos of the blue hazy orbs in the sky were photographers trying to catch a glimpse of the northern lights. About 15 of these blue orbs were found in two clear spots in the empty atmosphere. 
The photographer who captured the spectacular images, Chat Blackley, says he couldn't believe what he saw. He said the sight was literally out of this world. It may look like the bright blue stream from an alien ship, but NASA says it's actually related to a scientific experiment. The Andoya Space Center in Norway launched a pair of rockets that released metallic dust. The dust was released as part of a way for scientists to investigate conditions inside the Arctic lights. The metallic dust created an amazing light show, but it also helped researchers track charged particles in the jonosphere. This experiment was done purely so that scientists could learn as much as possible about the processes that occur at the Arctic peak, where magnetic field lines bend to propagate into the atmosphere and space particles meet the solar wind. The northernmost island has been discovered by scientists as the closest landmass to the North Pole. Thanks to the recently shifting ice mass, this piece of land has come to be known as the northernmost island. The discovery, as with many others, was purely accidental. Mortal Rush, head of the Residual Station Research Facility in Greenland, said he and his team went to Focus Island to collect science samples, but when they arrived on the island discovered by the Danes in 1978, they realized they were in the wrong place. They had missed their target by about a kilometer. Of course the island was incredibly small, only about 27 meters wide and rising more than 3 meters from the surface to the ocean. Still, the fact that it was technically the world's northernmost landmass meant that these explorers were standing as close to the North Pole as a person could stand on solid land. There may be more just below the Greenland ice cap. The C-47 crash involved an emergency response exercise in which a group of Canadian soldiers simulated operating an abandoned weather station on Alafrington Island, where they were conducting a sovereignty patrol near the North Pole in 2005. What made it so interesting was that they used the wreckage of a U.S. Air Force C-47 as part of their exercise. The wreckage was from an airplane that crashed here in 1949. More than 50 years later, the plane hadn't moved an inch and was still sitting in the snow just a few miles from the North Pole. As far as we know, the C-47 was equipped with skis for landing in the snow and initially landed at the air station for resupply. Overnight, however, ice had accumulated heavily on the airplane. Unaccustomed to these harsh conditions, the crew first cleared the ice, but not the ice on the wings or stabilizer. They then tried to leave using an airstrip that was only 1,280 meters long and covered with about 12 centimeters of snow. They were also reported to have a total overload of 400 kilos. As the plane took off, the right wing tilted and they crashed into a river bank. The C-47 was stranded there, but fortunately the crew escaped unharmed. The vehicle was abandoned and no one came back for the plane. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.